being able to quickly and reliably produce high quality tables in Databricks is going to have a huge impact on every customer. But all data is not created as equal. Today, customers are collecting massive amounts of data in data lakes in the cloud, and these data sets just keep growing. Fine-grained governance beyond the file level is really difficult to achieve. This leads to data lakes unfortunately becoming data swamps. Because you can only reason at the file level rather than at the file contents, you end up having creating lots of subsets of the data just to get the right groups, the right access to the right data. It's a nightmare to enforce reliable governance. Of course, data isn't just going to be in one cloud, it's going to be in many. And the security APIs you have are low level and different across each of these clouds, which makes it really hard to keep everything consistent. This problem is just getting bigger and bigger. Most enterprises also want to share, audit, govern lots of data products like machine learning models, files, dashboards, and other data assets. There is no great way to solve this in a unified way today. That's why I'm really excited to share the industry's first unified catalog for the lake house, the Unity Catalog. The Unity Catalog provides one interface to govern virtually all data assets. It allows organizations to standardize on one fine-grained solution so that they can have one security model based on ANSI SQL for data lakes across all clouds. And the best part of this is that you can federate it so it works with existing catalogs, so there is no need for heavy migration. Now, I'm really excited to welcome back Matei to tell us more about the Unity Catalog. Great. I'm really excited to introduce the Databricks Unity Catalog. Um, so as Elise said, uh, data lake governance today is unnecessarily complex. Um, and a lot of the reason for that has to do with data lake storage systems that represent everything as files. So let's imagine that we have a, a bunch of users and a bunch of uh, data in a data lake, for example, representing uh, you know, pages on the web or users on our website or something like that. The issue is that data lake systems themselves just represent this as a bunch of files. And whenever you set permissions to them, you have to do it at this uh, uh, very coarse granularity. For example, if we want to limit you know, which users can get access to which of the data sets here, we would have to look around and somehow make a rule about which user can access which underlying files and how those files map to the business rules that we're trying to set up. Like this is only about US data, for example, or UK data. And so when you set the permissions in these systems, you have to give these file level permissions. You might be able to set them on a directory or something like that, but they're about the low level you know, physical structure uh, of the data. Now, when you have this kind of system, a whole bunch of problems start to come up. So for example, let's say that you've set a, you're trying to set this up and you have some users that should only be able to see a few columns or a few rows within your table. And so that is a subset of your file. Well, you can't do that with a file-based access control model. Either they see the whole file or they don't. So in all of the, uh, you know, the, the data lake systems today, you have to be careful about you know, what is in a file as a whole and you can't have these fine-grained row and column level permissions. Even if you're okay without the fine-grained permissions, uh, another challenge that might come up is, you know, what if you want to change your data layout? Let's say you figured out a better way to organize your data that's going to make queries and updates a lot more efficient. For example, you can't do it without messing up your security model. You have to change the, the security uh, configuration whenever you change the physical layout of your data, and it becomes very complicated to do that. And finally, what do you do if the governance rules in your organization change? You might have some change about you know, what fields uh, someone is allowed to access, and it actually requires you to rewrite all your data in a, into a different format just so that you can have you know, the right files and give permissions to the right files. So it's very inflexible and very complicated compared to what you know, data management professionals are uh, used to to work with these. But the problem gets even worse when you look at how the data lake fits within the greater picture of um, analysis and machine learning at an organization. Uh, first of all, with most data lakes, you not only have the files, but you also have metadata. For example, you have a system like the Apache Hive Metastore that keeps track of table definitions and views. And so you have to give users permissions on that as well, which tables and which views uh, can they see. And this can actually go out of sync with the underlying data. There's nothing guaranteeing that you know if a user has permission on a file, then they have a permission on the corresponding table, or you know if they're blocked from a table, then they can't get to the underlying file. So it's very confusing to manage. You have two different interfaces for doing this in two places. 
And you know, most data um, uh, workloads also involve other systems. So for example, if you're trying to, to run uh, you know, analytics jobs and actually you know, most of the data is in the data lake, but you also have something in a data warehouse, uh, that's a SQL database that has a completely different permission model uh, where it's not based on files anymore. And so you have to set the permissions on that as well. And it's, it's very different from either the metadata or the files themselves. And if your users are also doing machine learning, you probably also want to manage a bunch of models, for example, uh, using, uh, using MLflow, and that has yet another governance model as well. So just uh, managing data, managing access permissions, and getting audit logs of everything that's happening uh, in, a, in a modern enterprise stack can be extremely challenging. So how does the Unity catalog tackle all that? Um, the idea is, um, is actually very uh, clean and simple. Uh, basically with the Unity catalog, we put a single unified object model in front of all the data that you might have in your data lake and in other data sources within the organization. And we give you a standard, an industry standard, and very flexible interface for, um, for configuring permissions, which is actually the ANSI SQL uh, you know, grant uh, uh, control language that you have there. So anyone who's administered a SQL database can actually begin administering these massive data sets in your lake house uh, and uh, make, it, make it really easy to control what people have access to. So the, the Unity catalog combines uh, keeping track of uh, metadata, things like table definitions and view definitions with permissions, and it allows you to define tables and views that are backed by files, um, and it allows you to set permissions just on those tables and views using ANSI SQL at a fine granularity. You can set it on tables, rows, columns, or views. You don't have to think about what files each of those tables maps into. On top of that, with the Unity catalog, you can also easily add other data sources and get the same access control model uh, inside it for your users to use. So for example, you can add SQL databases into them and start creating views or tables that maybe combine different data sets and have a, a single way of setting uh, policies uh, you know, using attributes across all of this type of information. Um, we are also supporting uh, managing models inside the Unity catalog, so you can have models that are tagged, for example, as containing personal data or European data or something like that, and you can have a single uh, way of, uh, of governing them and the data that, uh, that went into them. Um, and of course, with Delta sharing, we're also giving you the same interface to manage data that's been shared with you and figure out who in your organization has access to these shares. So um, you get one unified uh, governance model for all these types of data assets. Um, and then the final benefit is that uh, all of the accesses to these objects have to pass through the Unity catalog. Uh, and so we have a central place to audit all the accesses. And so you get this, this detailed audit log of what everyone is accessing. And you can, you can uh, uh, much more easily implement you know, compliance uh, best practices through that as well. So how, does, how, how do you actually use the Unity catalog? Let's start by showing how to use it for uh, tables. Um, so the catalog is designed so you can actually take existing data you have in the cloud or in a data lake and start adding these fine-grained permissions in front of it. So you could just create a new table you know, that, that we build uh, for you in your own storage bucket, but you could also uh, create an external table that points to an existing location in S3 or ADLS or your favorite cloud storage system, and you can tell the, the Unity catalog what uh, credentials, such as an IAM hole, to use for accessing that, and then you know, the catalog will be able to get to it, but all the permissions for end users will be these fine-grained permissions that you set using uh, table and view definitions in front of it. And so once you've declared your table or you know, pointed it at an existing table, uh, you can simply use uh, you know, the SQL data control language grant statements to grant permissions. So for example, you can grant permissions to a whole group like engineers. You can grant permissions on individual columns if you want uh, to another group and so on. Now the permissions aren't just limited to tables and columns. The Unity catalog also understands SQL views, and this allows you to create um, um, views that aggregate the data uh, in complex ways and to give someone access to just a specific subset of the data. So for example, let's say that we had uh, these, uh, these IoT events we collected here, and for some users in our company, we only wanted them to see aggregate data by uh, date and country instead of seeing the individual events. 
we can just create a view that aggregates that and grant select on that view. And the Unity catalog will make sure that these users can only see the aggregated data. So you can have uh, arbitrary logic in there. You can also uh, check the user's identity when deciding what data to show to them. And so you can implement complex policies that way if you, uh, if you like that model. Now, tables and views get you pretty far, but when you have to uh, manage uh, governance for very large data sets uh, you know, in, in very large enterprises, you often also want um, a, a, a way to factor out the policies so that uh, it's much easier to set a policy on a lot of data uh, together. And so for that uh, purpose, we're actually uh, supporting attribute-based access control in the Unity catalog as well. This allows you to create an attribute, which is basically a tag that you can then attach to a whole bunch of data items and manage all the controls for that attribute centrally through one rule, as opposed to having to, uh, you know, you know, to create hundreds of different uh, grants on individual data items. So in this example, I'm creating an attribute PII for PII data, and then I can take tables and add this attribute on specific columns into it. And then I can write a statement that grants uh, select permissions on any table in this database um, uh, for, for any column that is not PII to a specific group. So now I have a single statement that sets the permission on all the data with this tag. And for administrators or data stewards, it's very easy to go in and add the tag or remove it uh, from individual items and uh, you know, not have to worry about uh, managing you know, lots of different permissions on, on the tables themselves. So it's a, it's a really powerful way uh, to manage uh, security permissions at scale. So this has all shown you how to do this through SQL, just to emphasize that you know, this is a, a, you know, a standard way to do things that's going to be immediately familiar you know, to anyone who's, who's administered a database before. Um, if you want to do this visually, we also have um, a great um, uh, user interface for the Unity catalog. And so the user interface allows you to manage the tags or the grants directly in the UI and see who has access to it. And it also takes advantage of the auditing features that are built in to Unity Catalog to show you who is using each table and also what data sets are upstream of it and what data sets are derived from it. So it actually gives you this uh, immediate view about you know, which tables are actively being used, who can I talk to about this table, and so on. And it's also a collaborative user interface where you can start describing your table you know, within your organization and start telling people uh, you know, what this data is about so that they can easily discover it and work with it. So we're very excited that you know, the, the auditing capabilities also allow us to, uh, to build uh, this aspect of the catalog. Okay, so that's been a little bit about how to use it. Now, how does it actually work under the hood? How, how do we uh, actually enforce this and, uh, and, and really securely give people access to these high-level uh, definitions of, uh, of the data? Um, so the way it works is, you know, your, your users on Databricks are running computation on uh, just a cluster or a SQL endpoint that they're submitting uh, commands to. And then that cluster connects to the Unity catalog and the Unity catalog is what actually has all the data source definitions and the credentials to get to them, such as IAM holes uh, or uh, you know, uh, credentials to connect to a database and so on. So before any data is accessed, the user code has to make a request to the catalog and the catalog can enforce the permissions and also audit the request before it actually gives it access. When actually enforcing the access, we've also designed the Unity catalog so that it, it works securely across any type of computation that the user may want to do. So it can be enforced in, in SQL, but also Python, Scala, Java, and R. You know, any user code can be running in there with any libraries. Uh, we, we don't, we don't want to limit what kind of computation you can do in order um, uh, you know, to, to stream the data into it securely. And so we've designed the protocol between the user code and the Unity catalog to deliver the data securely and as efficiently as possible in all these situations. And basically the way it works is the user code never gets the raw data that they're not supposed to have access to or the raw credentials, such as an IAM hole. Uh, they always get either filter data that the catalog service will filter for you, or they'll get these short-lived tokens that allow them fast direct access to specific underlying data files. So just as an example, let's say you have user code that connects to the catalog and it, it's asking to select data from a table called events. 
and imagine that this user is actually allowed to read the whole table. They have permission to do that. In this case, the Unity catalog will check the permissions, you know, audit the access, and then it will actually give the user code a temporary SC token that allows it to read just those files within the events table. So this transfer, the, the reading of this data will be extremely fast when the user has full permissions on it. It's basically, you know, as fast as if we weren't running the catalog in front of it as well, but it's much more secure than giving the user code an IAM hole because uh, it, it will now always be in sync with the table definition. And if we ever change permissions or we change the table definition, you don't have to hunt up all these IAM holes and figure out you know, what uh, files in a directory structure they had access to. And of course, if the user it was only allowed to select a subset of it, we would just filter the data first uh, before, uh, before giving it to this user. Um, now, that was all about accessing tables, but we're also really excited about the support for managing non-table access in a centralized way. So just as an example, this is uh, how our interface looks for managing machine learning models. You can have models from your MLflow model registry uh, be, be visible in uh, the Unity catalog, and then you can grant permissions on them, for example, to, to individual groups. Uh, and then the other thing you can do is you can also add attributes on models and you can grant permissions, you know, say on all models having a specific attribute to a specific group. So you can actually start governing machine learning models, files, and of course tables and views through the same attribute system, which is something um, uh, that, that's, you know, very difficult to, uh, to do today and will give you a super straightforward way to actually manage all the data and all the derived assets in your organization. Finally, we've designed the Unity catalog uh, to be open, to integrate uh, very widely with the ecosystem of both existing storage, existing data catalogs, and also potential clients that can connect to it. And we're doing this in a few different ways. So first of all, the Unity catalog can easily connect to existing catalogs you have, such as an Apache Hive Metastore, and add fine-grained permissions in front of those, uh, so you don't have to move your data. And it can also connect, of course, to storage systems where you have tables, such as you know, Amazon S3, Azure ADLS, uh, Google Cloud Storage, and so on. Um, and you can uh, also connect the Unity catalog with uh, partner products such as Amuda and Privacera that, um, uh, that allow you to centrally govern data and, and create sophisticated request workflows uh, uh, and you know, maybe manage data that's living in other systems as well, not just in Databricks. So we're working with these partners to make that straightforward. Now, at the same time, you know, if you want to access data in the Unity catalog from outside Databricks, for example, from you know, your favorite data warehouse or something like that, that's also possible through the Delta Sharing project that we introduced or just through standard JDBC and ODBC. So the data is not locked into the platform. You can efficiently read it from other places, and this will also enforce the permissions that you set in the Unity catalog for, for those users. And finally, we worked really hard to make the interface for setting permissions standard. Uh, we think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's untenable to have lots of different proprietary interfaces for managing permissions in every cloud and in every other system that, where you work with data. And so we chose the ANSI SQL data control language with grants and user groups and so on to make this something standard where you know, a lot of administration tools can support it and you know, any user who's managed a SQL database before uh, can, uh, can begin uh, administering a subset of your catalog if you'd like them to. So that's, the, that's a summary of the Unity Catalog. Um, Unity Catalog brings fine grain centralized governments to Lakehouse uh, and Data Lake and machine learning through a very simple standard interface, which is ANSI SQL. And we think this is going to be essential to fully realize the potential of the Lakehouse model. Thus far, the, the, the governance model for data lakes has simply been more complicated than it needs to be, and there's no reason for it to stay that way. So with Unity Catalog, you'll be able to manage all this data, uh, you know, as if it was a SQL database, you'll have fine-grained permissions uh, and you'll be able to access it from a wide range of systems and it will still be highly efficient, uh, low cost, you know, highly reliable and it'll have all the advantages that, uh, you know, Lakehouse and Data Lake systems have today. Um, so you'll be able to work with, uh, with data across clouds, across storage systems through this unified uh, interface. 
Uh, we'd love to have you uh, try out the Unity catalog, and we're inviting users to join our waitlist at databricks.com slash Unity uh, to try uh, out the catalog when it's ready.